Hey, what's going on everybody? I hope you're doing well. Today in our series of cleaning videos, we're gonna attack this guy. This is my Ruger Security 6 chambered in 357 Magnum. I absolutely love this gun. I haven't really shot it an enormous amount, so it's not super dirty, but uh, I have it, so we might as well clean it. This video is going to be pretty applicable to most revolvers, um, especially any of them that just have the same kind of uh, dropout cylinder design that the Ruger Security 6 does. But uh, today, we are getting this uh, 357 cleaned up, so let's get right into it. <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, we have moved off of the dining room table, um, especially just for these smaller guns. I figure it's not really worth worth it to uh, take up the entire dining room table for a week and <laughs> leave all my camera stuff there like I did last time with the last couple of uh, rifle cleaning videos. Okay, so first things first, as always, clear the firearm. This one's not clear. Just grabbed it out of the car. <laughs> Alright. Now, if you don't know how to clear a revolver, drop your cylinder, look in your cylinder. Are there bullets in your cylinder? Nope. Okay, you're clear. You're done. All good. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, like I said, this has not actually gotten a, uh, a cleaning yet, so I'm curious how dirty it's going to be. Um, I've probably put 60 rounds through it total since I bought it, so really it hasn't gotten a whole lot of action, but uh, definitely not a bad thing to clean your gun as always got our handy uh, gun mat here from rudiment arms linked in the description below um my friends own this company so that's why i always shill for them they deserve the shill um we are ooh, gonna grab our trusty cleaning kit here same cleaning kit that we have been using in all the other videos also linked in the description below or at least something similar is um, this is just going to have all of the brushes and pads and scrubby stuff that I need. And then we are going to grab our lovely Hoppies Elite gun oil and gun cleaner. Same as we have been using the whole time. So exterior wise, um, I'm really not going to worry too much about it. Uh, there's no noticeable wear whatsoever. Uh, whoever did own this gun before me also did an absolutely excellent job of taking care of it. So uh, I was lucky to find uh, this firearm in the uh, the condition that I bought it in, and I'm planning on keeping it in as good a condition as I found it in. Okay, so the nice thing about cleaning a uh, revolver is that it's extremely simple. Really, you're only going to need uh, possibly one of the wire brushes, one of the soft brushes, and um, you know, one of the blue rags. I don't. I, I couldn't find my blue rags, so I'm just using some of these 30 cal patches because they're absorbent enough for my needs. And uh, obviously, I don't have too much exterior here to uh, to wipe down. Uh, if you, if the externals of your gun are you know getting surface rust or anything nasty like that, definitely hit it with some of the gun cleaner. Let it soak for a little while, um, and then you know, and then and then give it a good scrub. Uh, this is actually pretty well oiled. Even from uh, even from the shop because that would have been the last uh, people who who cleaned it, so no surface rust, no nothing like that. So the only thing I'm really going to worry about cleaning today is uh, the back side of the cylinder here, each of the chambers of the cylinder, front side, uh, the barrel, um, all throughout there. Uh, I'm going to get all of this area back here where my firing pin is, where the hammer engages. Um, it's a little bit a little bit scored back there. Definitely definitely got some uh, powder on there So we're gonna clean that up and That is about it on this gun today. It's kind of what makes revolvers an awesome apocalypse gun is that they are Not only extremely simple to operate extremely simple to keep clean um, just very reliable guns um, and obviously most of them are chambered in a nice hefty uh, man-stopping kind of caliber or zombie stopping or you know whatever kind of apocalypse we're going to be dealing with next year I mean in the future so uh, let's just get right down to it gonna put a bit of gun cleaner right here on the back side of the uh, cylinder um, as well as on the front here gonna get a little in this uh, area here where the spindle allows it to spin just 
make sure it's all nice and clean in there. And I'm going to give a spritz right on the back wall here where your firing pin is. And I'm not going to let it soak for too, too long because it's really just, it's just not nasty enough to make me feel like I have to do that. Uh, the back wall here, I am just going to scrub off. Yeah, see, it's definitely dirty. So it's good that we're doing this. I have been firing like um, really, really nasty, dirty uh, Russian surplus 38s out of it. And I'm only doing that because, first of all, it's it's a revolver. It can handle it. And I guess second of all, because ammo is hard to come by and very expensive right now. So, you know, some some Tula or uh, I can't remember what brand it is. Just steel cased um, 38s are, are just fine for this particular application. And actually, well, so we're pretty good for the back wall there. Um, you might be able to see it's nice and silver now, whereas it was black before. Get a little bit up in there. Can get a little more on the bottom. Let that sit for just a second. So there actually is a 357 a uh, little uh, soft brush here. Uh, it's actually a 9 mil. 357 and 9 mil are, in fact, the same size. Um, why is that so large? Let's see. Where's my 9 mil down here? 38. There we go. Okay, cool. So 38, 357 are going to be the same uh, the same brush, and we don't obviously have to put any of our extensions on. Just gonna throw the wire brush on our uh, on our rod cleaning rod here. So yours should just spin freely, just like this. That's going to allow the spiral of the brush and the rifling of the barrel to just allow it to spin freely, so it's not getting all caught up in there. So that's good. Um, the one thing here, if you're not using a snake, which obviously I'm not, is it's kind of it's not impossible impossible but it's pretty hard to come in from the back here so you are going to be pushing whatever debris kind of into this area here but it's not really a closed chamber so you don't have to worry too too much about it just going to give it a nice <clears throat> should be just about good on that so the barrel wasn't too bad um blew any of that dry debris that was in there, anything anything that was crusty, kind of blew it back into the, the cylinder gap there, and I'm not too worried about that, I'm just going to throw, let's see, you're going to look for this uh, little eye hook here, and thread one of the smaller patches through it, one of the 9 mil patches, or uh, in this case it's just a pistol patch. And you're going to be better at it than me because, wow, I'm bad at it. There we go. So you're looking for something like this, kind of a double-sided flag like that. Get a little cleaner on there. We're going to make sure the barrel's nice and dry when we're done with it here. Going to get it run into there and grab the cleaning rod. And just kind of work your way in and out a couple times. Honestly, I'm not expecting this to have any debris whatsoever on it. Yeah, it's almost 100% clean, so that's good. So I'm going to leave that patch on there because I'm going to use that same patch to clean out um, all the cylinder chambers after I do the same exact thing that I did to the barrel with this lovely uh, bristle brush here. Just in and out a couple times, in and out of each one. And now these can actually get surprisingly dirty, especially if you're using dirty ammunition. So definitely uh, make sure those are clean. Uh, the, the issue if you don't keep these clean is going to become uh, loading and unloading your shells. If there's too much gunk uh, attached to the sides, then you can actually have a lot of trouble getting uh, empty casings out. And um, new rounds in are also going to be an issue. Yeah, see, they're, they're definitely dirtier. You can definitely tell there that those are dirtier than the barrel was by like a significant amount. 
So I'm actually going to run the bigger brush through them as well. Just each one individually. And it doesn't matter what caliber your revolver is, this process is going to be uh, pretty much identical. Unless you're cleaning something like a single action, in which case you will have just taken the cylinder out completely. I am going to complete a video with my single action revolver as well to demonstrate that. But on the back side of the cylinder here, I'm going to give it a good uh, scrub. It's been soaking for uh, you know a few minutes with the, with the cleaner there. So that is nice and shiny, no scoring on that, no buildup, and it was pretty nasty actually. That's one reason I really love using these patches, because you can very easily see what is clean, what is dirty, and uh, I've got a like hundred million of them, so it's not like I'm burning through resources. I'm going to do the same to the front as we did to the back, just give it a surface scrub and you can see that's pretty darn dirty. Make sure you're getting in here along the inside corner where the cylinder is actually going to meet the uh, cylinder rod there. You can get some nasty debris build up in there and if you get too much build up here you might have a little bit of trouble rotating your cylinder. Which obviously is not ideal. And just a quick, pretty, pretty useless scrub on the outside there, but hey, why not? One other place that you can actually get a fair bit of buildup is right in here. I'd say use a Q-tip for this um, if it's if it's real nasty. This one's pretty uh, pretty clean, so I'm just gonna give it a little little scrub it up here with a patch. But honestly, it shouldn't be. Yeah, it's almost completely clean in there, so not a problem at all. And quite frankly, that's just about it. Um, Oil-wise, let's see, pop that guy open. <clears throat> You're going to want to put one little drop in here uh, where you get most of your motion, most of your rotation. And I mean like one drop, one half drop. Don't soak it. No, no reason for this to be soaked. You're also going to want, on the back side here, um, one drop right where you'll see this little lever that moves your cylinder um, up and around. You're going to want to put one drop in there. Just one drop. Um, as with oil, most of the time, you're just going to want to apply it to moving parts. Not, not everywhere. Um, and then give it a good, give it a good rub kind of work it into the surface of the metal um, and then wipe off any excess. Okay. Ah, knocking stuff over here. And I don't recommend dry firing your revolver. Don't drop that hammer, just decock it as best you can there. You can also put a drop of oil back here in the hammer mechanism. Like I said, um, anything that moves could definitely use oil. This one is exceptionally smooth right now, so I'm actually not worried about it. And I can actually see that it's still uh, it's still got a nice nice oily sheen to it from the last cleaning. So I'm not worried about that at all. Um, the other place here that's actually going to move is right in here at the base. Or the, uh, where the cylinder arm kind of meets the gun right there. That's also obviously another hinge. So if that's getting, you know, if that's got any particulate or dirt or anything in it, then you may have an issue there. So just make sure that's uh, free and clear of any uh, dirt. And if it is, you know, a little grindy or whatever that, and you can uh, give it a give it a little a little scrub and then uh, put a drop of oil in there as well. Um, once again, I'm not going to be doing that today. For this one just because it is already quite clean so um, once you're done here you should have very very easy and free motion on just about everything the last moving part that I'm gonna mention here that may need some oil but probably not too often is the actual um, cylinder release button on the side here or lever whatever uh, whatever you've got if it's getting sticky or anything like that you can uh, throw a drop in there just make sure you um, get your rag in there and wipe off any excess so it's not running wet.
Other than that, there's really not a whole bunch to say. Revolvers are extremely easy to use, easy to maintain, and as long as you are, you know, relatively nice to them, you're going to have a very reliable, you know, apocalypse gun if that's uh, if that's what it has to be for you. So that's it, guys. I actually managed to make a short video. Amazing. So if you like gun content and you like uh, reviews and cleaning and shooting and really me just doing dumb stuff sometimes, occasionally, I haven't gone out and actually shot in a while just because ammo is so gosh darn expensive it's a little tough to come by um, at a reasonable you know reasonable rate so I do have a couple coming up that I'm uh, working on I actually had to get with the ATF on one of them just because I, I have this thing about being arrested in, in federal prison that I just <laughs> I don't want to do it so we're gonna see if that video is gonna work out you know we'll find out as it is guys uh, we are approaching 350 on the subs. Thank each and every one of you. You are the best. I really, really appreciate that support. It's fantastic. So make sure you drop me a comment below. Tell me what kind of revolver you're working with, what caliber, and uh, how much do you absolutely love it or hate it. I don't know. Just let me know. Uh, if you like this kind of content, you want to see more gun cleaning videos, uh, reviews, all that kind of stuff, you know what the sub button is, little bell next to it's going to let you know when I upload again. Thank you, as always, for checking out what we're doing over here at Pew Pew Reviews, and I will see you all in the next one.